As you've just seen in that little highlight reel, we are in superb form at the moment. In fact, we've won every single game since our last episode. We are going to go on and see on promotion. I didn't expect it to be today, but at half time in our match against Apatia, there's a chance that it might be. So I've switched the old cameras on and I thought we'd bring you back just in case we seal the title today. Here's why I didn't think we'd be winning the title on this round of games. Our two title rivals are Orient and Varish Din. Both in action at the same time as us, both playing teams in the relegation zone, but Varish Din have had a man sent off in the first half and are losing to Inter Suppressic, and Orient are tied nil-nil with Croatia at the moment, and if those results stay the same, and we are 2-0 up in our game, well it could well be that this afternoon we might win the title. So we're going to continue with our game, now that I've come back, we'll probably end up losing 3-2. And both of our rivals will turn their games around and win. But I didn't want to seal our first promotion of FM22 Mercenary without you here to see it. So we've come back just on the off chance that we might be able to seal it. The one we're really keeping an eye on is this Orient result down here. Because if they win, it will go through to another round of games. Because we'll only be 15 points clear at the top of the table with 15 still to play for. But if they are held and Inter Suppressic also win that game against Varish Din, we're going to be sealing promotion this afternoon. On 67 minutes, we're into another highlight. I'm going to freshen up the team a little bit. Then we'll see you for the end of the game. OK, well, from that little highlight, we've ended up scoring. I don't think my substitutes have even gone through yet. As Sabelic picks the ball up on the edge of the area, lays it back to our left back. And Burnic, who is the right winger that I'd previously mentioned, potentially playing as a striker. Let's confirm those changes now. Well, since he's been to a striker, he's done all right. He scored in the first half of this game as well. He's just added his second. I think he also scored in our last fixture as well. So he's on a good little run of form. And we are 3-0 up. But we need to get out of these highlights as quickly as possible. As they pull a goal back almost instantly. We need to get out of the highlights and we need to check on the other fixtures going on around the country to see if this victory is still going to be enough as things stand with 20 minutes to go to seal us promotion. Come on, let's get out of this. Let's have a look at the results of the other teams. So we want to see how Orient are doing. They've gone a goal down now to Grazia and Farish Din are still losing so if those results stay as they are, we're going to be 18 points clear of those two teams. Remember, Dinamo's second team, they can't get promotion. It's looking good, even if Varish Din come back and get an equaliser, and so do Orients, we'll still be okay. If they both draw and we win, that's going to be enough for us. We've just got to keep these results as they are, as we've got Mikulic, our left-back, Raiding forward down the left. Here's Sabelic. Jencic, one of the subs we just bought on. Javorcic, possibly our player of the season. I'm going to let you decide that. You'll have seen another one of his great finishes from outside the box in the highlights reel at the start of this video. He's just added another one to his collection of great goals. Look at this. Just outside the D, right into the corner of the goal. He's a special little player, Javorcic. Is he going to be the one that we choose as our player that we're going to carry on tracking through this save? So Varish Din are still behind. Orient are still behind. We are still looking like 18 points clear with just 15 points to play for. Let's make our final substitution before we see the final 17 minutes of the game. Okay, keep your eyes peeled, everybody. We're looking at that inter Suppressic game and we're looking at that Orient game. Can they both stay as 1-0 to teams that are in the relegation zones? We've got, what, five minutes left. Let's just check in. Barish Din not doing anything. Oh, Orient are 2-0 down against Croatia now. So it's Varish Din that we're looking at. Five minutes without a Varish Din goal. And I think we're going to be promoted. We've got into the 90th minute of our game. There is, of course, a highlight. We're not interested in the highlights. Our game is pretty much done and dusted at 4-1. Correction, at 4-2. It is done and dusted, isn't it? At 
Injury time, what, three and a half minutes? Should be. But we're more interested in what's going on in that Varish Din game. I did not see both of those teams losing, by the way, to teams in the relegation zone. Maybe one of them I could see, maybe not, getting their part of the job done. But whoa, 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 was a pressure to have scored a second as well. Although Orient have pulled a goal back and missed a penalty. Goodness me, it is getting close and Kratzia's second goal was actually from the penalty spot. This is pretty close. There is no confetti falling. So does that mean something has happened late on in one of those games? Let's get the team talk done, then let's check out the table. So there you have it. The news item confirms it. Dugapolia celebrate promotion. Neither of our rivals were able to win their games. In fact, they both ended up losing them. So we are 18 points clear of them with just 15 points to play for. It means that we've managed to seal promotion with five games of the season still remaining. You can see that we've still got games against Varishdin to come. I thought that might be the one we're coming back for, and that one could be a vital, vital game. But the run of form that we have been on since the winter break has been pretty special. So we got that 2-0 win against Orient in our last episode, and that just set us up. We won 1-0 in our next game, 2-0, 3-0, 2-1, and 4-2 in our most recent game. By the way, we will highlight the Apatia substitute goalkeeper as well in the game that we've just played, because it turns out that he's actually been finding our channel and watching a couple of the episodes. If Marco Shushak had been in goal, I don't think we'd have scored four against Apatia. Thank goodness he was on the bench for that game. Otherwise, we might have only drawn nil-nil. What I think we'll do now is play through those final five games of the season, and then we're going to come back and think, now, what are we are going to do next? But before we play forward to the end of the season, it's time for another Patreon update, and we are saying thank you to a new supporter of the channel. This time, it is the wonderfully titled Grumpy Bugger that has headed over to the Patreon page and pledged their support. We'll put a little link in the video description below to the Patreon page in case anybody else wants to check it out. Are we going to try and thank Grumpy Bugger for their support? by having a strong finish to the campaign. Finally, we've made it to the end of the season. It took a long time, let me tell you. Rather than playing weekly, we switched to playing fortnightly towards the end of the campaign. So there was a lot of clicking continue. It's a little bit of a bust towards the end of the season as well. Following that win against Apatia, we got four draws and one win against Varish Din, who were the best team that we played in the run-in. But we finished with a pretty lengthy unbeaten run that stretched all the way back to the winter break so that was pretty pleasing and I think you've got to say for a first season of a journeyman to get promoted and win the title I think is pretty pleasing and we did it by 15 points so I think that's been a really good campaign maybe the next thing we should do is to have a little think about who our player of our first club is going to be that we're going to keep an eye on as they progress through their career as we progress through ours. <laughs> So first of all, let's give you a player who's not going to be involved, but has been incredibly influential towards the end of the season. And that's going to be Ivan Burnich, who came into the team for the last maybe 10 games or so as a striker, when I'd been playing him as a winger for most of the campaign. And since we switched him to a striker, well, he's managed to score himself six goals. He's got nine goals in the league in total. He was pretty influential in getting us over the line when we were chasing that title. But I think the three players we're going to give you to choose from for your player of our first club are as follows. Ivan Basancic is going to be our first. Now, he didn't feature a lot in the starting 11 during the first half of the campaign, but he came into midfield since the winter break and managed to score five goals for us, including perhaps the most audacious goal that I've ever had on a live YouTube episode. If we're picking Basancic, it would largely be on the back of that one goal alone, whereas our other two choices have been a little bit more involved for the full campaign. Starting with Duja Javorcik, who is now wanted by Beitar Jerusalem and Hapoel Haifa. He has scored 11 goals this season, many of them from outside of the box. He's almost been a one-man goal of the month competition at times. He's finishing with an average rating of 7.23, but not to be outdone 
is the person that scored the very first goal of this journeyman adventure. That's Ivan Chabelic, who I guess will be returning to Hajduk split at the end of this season, having got 11 assists and six goals and an average rating of 7.39. So there are your three players, and we're going to put a vote in the communities tab so you can decide which of those three we're going to check in on on a yearly basis to see how their career progresses as we continue through ours. But talking of career progression, I think it's the job centre we need to end on. So the contract expires in around about a month. The good news is that we have completed our National B licence. The day after we won Duga Polia the title, we asked the board if they would fund our A licence. They turned us down, citing a lack of finances. But nevertheless, we are a one and a half star manager, but we're not currently completing a coaching badge right now. So I think that is going to be one of the stipulations that we're going to have to consider when we move jobs. We're looking pretty decent for just one year's experience. Level of discipline is up to nine now. Maybe that's going to help us when we get our next job. And there is plenty of choice to choose from. We've just got to decide what our strategy is going to be. You might be able to help us out with this and tell us what strategy you would use in the comment section down below. Option A, I think, is to head to one of the big leagues, such as France, maybe Italy, Germany. But we'd probably be looking at going to a club that was perhaps at the third level of football in one of those big leagues. Maybe Red Star Paris in France, who are in the National and have just managed to finish fourth, narrowly missing out on promotion. We could bounce in there, try and take them to the title might give us another managerial boost. A similar challenge at that level would be to jump into a club like St. Pauli, who've just been relegated from the German second division down to the third. We could jump in there, try and get them the title next season. Another promotion on our CV. Crucially, we'd be a professional club this time, whereas Duga Polia have only been training twice a week. So that is strategy number one. Option number two would be to stay with a second tier club like Duga Polia were when we arrived but perhaps in a slightly more prestigious league than Croatia. Maybe the Netherlands, maybe Portugal, Greece, maybe Belgium, a country like that. For example, Cambor have just been relegated from the Eredivisie. Maybe we could drop with them down into the second tier, try to bring them back. But there is an option three that I think could be lucrative for us as well, and that's to try and jump into a top flight club in one of the smaller leagues around Europe. Maybe if we could find a job, say, in Slovenia at a club like Maribor, who are one of the biggest teams in the country, they can't have missed out on the title by much, I wouldn't have thought, last season. They've qualified for Europe. They only lost out on the league title by five points, and the Maribor job is vacant. Could we jump into a job like this and try and get a top-flight title on our CV? So do we go for a big league but the third tier? Do we stay in the second tier but try and find a club that we could get another promotion at? Or do we try and join a top flight club in one of the smaller nations in Europe and try and start competing for top domestic honours? Let us know down in the comments section what you would do if you were in charge. And by the time we see you for our next episode, we could be well looking at our first game with our second club of FM22 Mercenary.